idea came from you, Janine, didn't it? You sent us this email about Bull and his sort of place in the history of Lincoln and, the, and there was an exhibition here, I think, that you had taken pictures from. And that really started us off because, um, I mean, the fact that we all have a, a permanent relationship with technology, we always have, but as what is now considered technology, computing, is so um, premised in Google, but like, but like computing, it becomes invisible at some point. That relationship disappears and you just sort of look at the, the interface becomes completely something else and you forget what's, what's behind it. That was a starting point and then um, thinking about Bool, who is very interesting in so many ways. He's an autodidact and for us that's always, that's been a very important aspect of how meaning is made, how people become protagonists of scenarios of being in the world and of uh, making being in the world. And so, so we have a number of works that address the idea of autodidacticism or thinking about that. So for us it was a really amazing connection to think that all the thought that he was doing, he had to sort of think it through himself. There was no, he didn't feel entitled to anything. He, he was learning on his own from modern languages to calculus. I mean, and that's an, and he was 16, 17, 18, and it's a kind of a, starts young and keeps doing it. And it was, but what is, so you take all these sort of amazing things to start with. And the other thing that, which is again, very interesting about him as I've mentioned before is, he talks about the universe of discourse or the importance of thinking about thinking. Another thing which, of course, made absolute sense to us. Um, but it was what was really interesting was then to sort of take these principles and see what one, how one could uh, shift those two. Because every assumption, uh, there has to be an opening out for, for assumptions to just be looked at again. And uh, like in the practice of Raps, it is that you know one plus one plus one does not make three. So it was also interesting to think about what happens when there is no, when certainties are looked at again. And it is partly, of course, the sort of looking at the yes gates and no gates rule, but also the certainties we think drive us, you know, in contemporary life and contemporary society. This is good, this is politically correct, this is politically wrong, or what is politics, this is politics, this is not politics, as if things were that simple. Uh, and the way things are going on in the world, we all have to sort of look at our certainties looking at recent history from Britain's uh, exit to Baghdad, what happened, you know, I'm talking about yesterday, not even. Uh, so for us, the question of uh, how does one break assumptions was part of that, both formally and uh, especially formally in the piece. So the idea that you could keep going through yes and then through no, but without changing direction, you were entering and exiting through these portals uh, and it was a continuous kind of open system, not a system like a loop, but you didn't change direction and yet you entered and yet you exited. Um, so that was, and the other thing of course is the idea of reflections and the fact that sky becomes on the ground and the ground becomes shifted and um, and so what is it, and the idea of, of, a, of an absent presence or a present absence because it disappears in certain lights, certain light conditions, it appears even more strongly in others. All of these things um, on a path that Gould probably walked himself, you know, a couple of hundred years ago, which seems like fitting. <laughs>